All right. So welcome to Think Data Thursday. Um, this is Diego Medrano, and um, this session is getting the most out of Tableau Server. Um, I work in our community, and we also have uh, Tracy Fitzgerald and Patrick Vanderhyde, who are also on our community team, um, assisting as panelists, um, and a fantastic group of other panelists who we will get to in just a moment. Um, but before I get started, just so we're all on the same page, there are a couple of items I'd like to go over for how Thick Data Thursday actually works. So first, um, I think that you should all be able to see everyone. In the chat dialog box, there's a section that says send to, scroll down and select all participants. Uh, this is how we will keep an open discussion amongst all of us. Um, it's a great place to put your questions. When you send the chat, your name will be labeled as a sender. And uh, please keep in mind, everyone will be able to see your chat. Um, so anyone else is also free to respond in the chat. So if you know an answer, we love to see that. Um, currently, you are all set to the mute position. You will notice above the chat section and below the participant section, there is a little hand icon. Clicking on this will make me aware that you have a comment that has not been addressed. Um, if you'd like to make a comment for the whole group to hear, send a direct chat to host and presenter or all panelists, and I'll take you off mute. Without further ado then, um, we will turn this session over to our panelists. But first, a little bit of information. So today we have four panelists, um, three will be presenting and one just for his fantastic brain. Um, but first we have Paul Benoub. Um Paul is the Tableau Center of Excellence Manager at UBS Bank in London. He is responsible for global deployment of Tableau Server with approximately 2,700 server users across multiple business units. Paul has been managing enterprise scale IT services for over 12 years at organizations such as Goldman Sachs and Royal Bank of Canada. He blogs at visninja.com and is active on Twitter at Paul Benoub at Paul Benoub. Um, we also have Jeff Strauss. Um, Jeff is a hands-on visual thinker that has fun creating unique high-impact visits and working with Tableau server enablement. He has been an advocate of Tableau for eight plus years and has been developing custom solutions using a combination of scripts and APIs for the past two years. We have Mark Jackson. In 2013, Mark was selected as a Tableau Zen Master. He is currently the Director of Business Intelligence at Piedmont Healthcare in Atlanta, Georgia. He has been with, I think it might be actually Piedmont, my bad, uh, since 2010. Uh, prior to Piedmont, he spent six years with KPMG, where he assisted a number of Fortune 1000 companies in both an advisory and an audit capacity. His industry experience has also been broad and varied, but primarily focused on healthcare, transportation, and information services. Mark's innovative spirit has also led to the development of services and tools that have gained global exposure. Mark is also a globally recognized leader in business intelligence solutions with expertise in data modeling, SQL, and data presentation tools. And then Toby, who is just kind of a whiz at all things I find, and has helped me with a lot, um, we wanted to add him because we thought he could be a great resource for answering a lot of those questions about Tableau Server. So Toby Erkson uh, has been working in the business intelligence and application development arenas for over 20 years. He's worked for a variety of businesses in the role as a full-time employee or contractor. His skills are a are a jack of all trades, but his focus has been Excel and access programming, reporting automation, and overall business intelligence reporting. He currently works for Daimler Trucks North America, um, the leading producer of medium and heavy duty trucks and specialized commercial vehicles. He is the Tableau administrator for the company and part of the small Tableau team that helps business users get the data and report the information they require with minimal IT bottlenecks. Toby is active in the Tableau community with such a strong desire to improve it and help others that he has been honored with the title and responsibilities of Tableau Ambassador, for which we are very thankful. Outside of work, Toby enjoys operating and maintaining his Ducati motorcycles and old Volkswagens, participating in forums related to his vehicles, camping with his family in one of their vintage vehicles, and life-threatening hobbies like rock climbing, racing, and telling his wife to do the dishes. So, without further ado, we um, will turn this over to our panelists. And I believe we are starting off with Paul. Are you able to uh, take okay, control? Can you, make me, can you make me present it, please? Um.
There we go. Okay. Yeah, I've probably just share my screen. Perfect. Let me know when you can see something. So you guys able to see the deck? Yep. Okay, great. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Diego. Um, hello from London, everybody. It's a great pleasure to be asked to come and present on Tableau Server, and it's an even bigger pleasure to be able to share the panel with three incredibly talented people who inspire me, and I know a lot of you are familiar with a lot of the great work they do. So um, they're the real experts. I'm going to try not to take up too much of your time, and uh, so we've got time for the main course and really just the warm-up act. So. What I'm going to cover, I'm going to buzz over it fairly quickly, as I said. There's two, two main aspects to, to what I'm going to talk about. The first one is the implementation of the Agile BI Tableau service at UBS. So it is our center of excellence model that, that we have constructed around Tableau at the bank. I'll just talk about some of the, the modules and the aspects that, that we feel make that great. And then I'm going to talk about introspection with custom admin views. And this borrows very heavily on very heavily Mark Jackson's work, Mark Jackson's um, work that he's done. So it's a bit of background noise. You're background mute noise if you're not on you're you're speaking. Okay, so it was covered in the okay, intro. So covered in the intro from Diego. Um, here's my path, my career path. So Diego, there's a lot of echo on the yeah, line. I'm not sure where that echo is sure coming echo from. Is coming from. Still there? Yep, seems That's to be good now. Okay. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, so it's covered in the intro, but this is this is my career path. Started out at a consultancy called Logica, then went into financial services, um, and through the through a couple of the big banks there until I had a bit of a tableau moment in 2012, and that's where things actually started to get enjoyable. Um, my speciality isn't any of the hardcore technical aspects around tableau. It's more about big picture stuff of how do you get an IT service that you love. Um, or one that you don't love, and, and bring it into a large organization and make it stick and get people get people to buy into it. So I've managed a whole different variety of infrastructure IT services through monitoring and scheduling and backups and Unix and what have you in those banks. And um, when I got to RBC, that's when I discovered Tableau, and um, I was delighted to accept an offer in 2014 to go to UBS and, do, and bring in Tableau as an IT service, which was a really exciting opportunity for me. So this is the Agile BI service that we've that we've uh, implemented. It is more than three people in the center, although we don't have our team isn't a lot bigger than that actually. So what we'd like to do is we say, okay, we have a Tableau service. We have Tableau server in the bank. That's great. It's an IT service. Users expect it to be change managed, incident managed, robust, highly available, and managed according to all the best IT principles. That's just a given. But what my team does is we have a load of other stuff that we wrap around the outside of that provides real value and differentiates us from other IT services in the bank. So first off, we drive data viz best practices. A lot of users, as I'm sure you're aware, are stuck in the mindset of text tables and grids of text, and they just don't think vis uh, you know, visually. And that's not their fault. It's just a mindset thing. So we help users to turn their visualizations into proper visualizations using the industry best practices. And my team's an expert in that. And we've had some really good success stories where we've taken people from text text jockeys, as I call them, through the We Like Bubble Charts and actually into really effective visualizations. We do a lot of user workshops and training. This is very important. Um, we do provide a lot of self-learning resources, but we have a six-module training syllabus, which uh, Carl Olchin from the Information Lab devised for us. And that runs two sessions a week and takes you from beginner to expert in desktop. And it's proved incredibly popular. We have 30, 40 people per session, and to date we've trained several hundred, I think. And so that's proving to be really useful. We've also stolen the Tableau Doctor branding, and we run our own internal Tableau Doctor sessions where users can just request uh, an appointment with, with the doctor. And they're very good as well, because uh, especially senior people do appreciate the one-on-one -on -one time, and it's generally worth the investment. We're a leading contributor to the industry events. We like to go to user groups. I co-run the London user group outside of UBS, where we have our own internal user groups. We participate as much as possible in any sort of forum webinar like this, but not just as delegates, as presenters. We like to get out there and sell our story and, and show what we're doing and um, you know, really, really start showing off how, how we love Tableau 
and that's great for the contacts. We also have really good consultancy relationships with two of the best out there, Information Lab and Interworks, both of which have supplied resources to my own team and also to user teams. Now, recruitment is a painful experience for many users. So when they come to me and say, I need a Tableau resource for six months, I take great pleasure in being able to take the pain out of the recruitment aspect for them. And we, because of our relationships with these guys, I can say, well, what type of tablet person do you want? And I can then get them somebody who really fits the bill. And we've had a lot of successes with those guys. So we, we don't regard our consultants as, as hired gun resources. We regard them as strategic partners and, and we'll continue to invest in, in, in their progress as well. So Jeff Bezos of Amazon says that they start with the customer and they work backwards. And that's very much how we do our, our business as well. Um, the customer is pretty much always right, apart from a couple of weeks sections that I could think of. And we make sure that we're always aware of the user experience, how the customer is, is enjoying the service or not. And we make sure that using our introspection, which I'll come onto the admin views, that we're always mindful of their, of their experience. So we really do try and concentrate on a, a, a unique and enjoyable user experience for them, for users using our service. And we're also building a really great data visual, visualization community at, at UBS. And I'll just uh, I'll just tick over to, should be able to see Internet Explorer. This is our Agile BI Connections page. Connections is just a Jive-based social hub uh, at the bank, but of which there are several thousand pages in UBS, and we're in probably the top 10, I think, in terms of the membership and hits. And we're really trying to drive this as, as a mixture of Tableau Public, Tableau Blogs, Twitter, Facebook. Trying to, like, it's a mishmash of all of those. So we have all our events, we have our, our training resources, we have getting started, we have competitions, we have blogs, um, and users can come on and ask questions with each other, to each other, as well as as well as well details about user groups and facts, and all sorts of different user blogs and testimonials and featured content. So this really is the heartbeat of what, of what we do at UBS, and it's absolutely critical to driving um, the enjoyment of the service. And my vision is that a user comes in and they spend, they grab a cup of coffee, and they go on here and they say, what's, what's new in Tableau World? Could it be a project update? Could it be a little bit about the tool? Could it be a competition? Could it be some uh, incident or anything? You know, so we're really driving this. And it's been absolutely critical to the success of the service. That's the actual BR pitch. Now, that's the first part. So I'm, um, and that's, that's, that's our center of excellence model. It's a self-service model. So we don't create visualizations for people because we only have a small team. And we also want to empower users to do it themselves. Now, if we created visualizations for people, there'd be two things would happen. One, we wouldn't get through all the work. And two, they wouldn't get, users would not get that Tableau experience. They'd just say, I want a report that looks like this, and then they'd get it. They wouldn't have that enjoyable development experience of surprising how, themselves how easy and agile the tool is to use. So that's another reason it's self-serve. Now, coming on to the custom admin views. This is a, uh, I think it's an old picture of the, the Tableau database schema. But what you can see here is there's a gold mine of information in here. And people like Mark Jackson, who uh, have really been in, integral in bringing in, in bringing this out to the community. And um, Russell Christopher did a post a while ago, but Mark's really taken it on board and shown what you can, what value you can get by looking into the Tableau Postgres database in terms of introspection. So we've created our own suite of um, administration views, thanks to uh, Dave Hart from Interworks, who did a great job for us. And I just want to tick over them and just show you the kind of thing that we can, that we've produced. So here's a, you should be able to see Tableau Desktop Shout if you can't. This is our system overview page. It just tells us it's a very basic view of views accessed, who's accessing what, which data sources are being accessed, and publishing. And the good thing is I can target that to a particular team or business unit, and they can go off and cut out all the other stuff and return the information that's pertinent to them, go and visit that content if they want to. So that's a nice little overview page. This page is about workbook access. So anything in the top right here is content that's being accessed a lot by a lot of people. I can either go to it or I can click on it, and I can see when it's being accessed, how many times it's being accessed, and who it's being accessed by. This is a heat map for me to look at my server usage, so I can see that these time periods here are pretty hot, cools down a little bit towards the afternoon, but we still get usage outside work as well. And I can see the, the important people that are looking at my service. We've blended it with staff, staff data so that we can get, a, get an understanding of exactly who is looking at the service and how many times they're using it. So that's really cool. We get a lot of um, use out of this view. 
this one talks about performance. Now, these dots here are renders of, of content on the server. So if your dot is in the green, it means you've created something that is quick. If it's in the red, it means you've created something that is slow. So we can use this to proactively support our users. So these guys at the top here are creating content that is pretty slow in Tableau world. It's not really that usable. So what I can do is I can follow up with these people and say, OK, this user here, I can say, well, actually, they're not doing too bad. They're creating content that's reasonably quick, but apart from this view here, which is dreadful. So I don't know what they're doing here. So I can look at that content, proactively go to that user and say, what are you doing here? Can we look at this content and make it faster for you? Um, and that's really great to be able to, to offer that ability of proactive support and understand the user's abilities in creating content. And if I scroll down to the bottom, these are people who I can send a t-shirt to for, for creating nice, snappy content on our server. Just move off to another one. This view here gives us a good indication of the health of our extracts in, in, in Tableau Server. Now, we have a problem with extracts. We've, we've got far too many, and we're really looking to expand the number of backgrounders. Um, when we when we upgrade our service soon. So we'll be doubling our number of backgrounders from three to six, which is long overdue. But I can use this to keep track of the of the uh, extracts that are running along that might need revisiting to tell the user, you know, do you want to switch that to an incremental or something like that? And the ones that are erroring as well. We can also get an idea of our schedules. You can see here, super saturated on the early schedule, causing us a real problem with latency. Um, and then I can get a top-down view of my schedule day to day here. And what I can see is we have a problem. We, we are cramming all our extract refreshes into the first bit of the day, and we are not making use of free time periods elsewhere in the day. So my team can work with users to shift their extract refreshes into a time period where the server is less busy, for example. So that's, that's pretty useful for us to get a good indication of what the backgrounder is up to. That's fantastic. This, visualize, this visualization here is um, about capacity management. Now, one of my favorites, actually. It's one of the most useful ones, because what a, a user who is um, a power user will often ask me questions as service manager and say, OK, how do I know that you, you've got your act together, that you, that you know what you're doing, that you've got a handle on capacity and performance? So I break these out for them, and it gives them confidence that we're managing the service correctly. So what you can see here is this, this chart at the bottom takes CPU and memory information from a, an agent called Prism, which runs on the server. And what that allows me to do is then as I add new users to the system, I can see the server respond and actually the trend, the usage of the memory and the CPU going up. So that allows me to add people with confidence. The last thing I want to do is go to a user and say, we've run out of capacity, because that will make me look very silly indeed. But what I can go to the users and say is, we think we're going to run out of capacity in six weeks based on our forecast. So that is a much easier conversation to have. Um, Looking at this content here, this also allows me to work out as how are people uploading content that's not getting used. Um, anything that's read is, is uh, stuff that's not being accessed. So there's, here's a, a half a gig data source in the UAT site of, of Tableau not being accessed for nearly a month. I can follow up with that user and say, OK, how about you get rid of that? You know, you know, nobody's using it, and it's fairly large. So that allows me to then make up the best, make up the, uh, the best use of the um, capacity that we do have. And the final view before I hand over, which is two. This one, it talks about geography, and it allows me to see where my users are, what business units they um, are a member of, and where my visualizations are getting access from. So there's, there's one that's an Asia Pacific focus. This one's got an EMEA focus. This one's got an America's focus. And I can use this to understand how many users are in different regions as well. If I suddenly see APAC streaking out there, then maybe I need to put some bodies on the ground to give them better support. And the final view, which is probably my favorite one, these are all the users on Tableau server going down the left. These dots here are um, accesses of the server, so users logging onto the server and using it. And what I can see, use, I can build up a profile of every single user on my system. So let's take Sabrina, for example. She logs onto Tableau server and has done for a while, but fairly sporadic, you know, maybe once a week something like that. Not a really massively engaged user. This person here has used it a couple of times. Maybe I need to follow up with them and say, well, why have you stopped using it? Did you get a bad experience? Did it not do what you want? But I can look at my frequent users as well. And then I can build up profiles. So these people here, clearly power users on it all the time. Catherine used it a lot. And now she's tailed off. So why is that? Has she moved roles? Is she bored with it? I don't know. It's worth a phone call. 
Um, but the whole the message is that I can build up profiles of every single user on my server and work out how engaged they are. Etishim, for example, I know he's a super power user, loves it, so he's on every day. So really, really great introspection. So I'm going to hand over now, but the message is that when we combine an agile tool like Tableau with a self-service center of excellence model that provides so much more than just the tool, and then we give ourselves the introspection to be able to manage the server better and understand the usage a lot better, you combine those three factors, and that's what's making Tableau rocket at UBS. So with that, I'll, I'm happy to hand over again. That was absolutely fantastic. Thanks a lot, Paul. And um, now we'll hand it over to Mark Jackson, who will be going over his uh, 10 pitfalls. All right. Appreciate it. And I'm definitely uh, very envious of what Paul has created over there at UBS and the community he has right around it, and definitely the, uh, the admin view that he's built off of that. I definitely want to copy some of that myself. So I'm going to run through my content pretty quickly um, and leave Jeff plenty of time to get through his stuff. My content is really already published out onto my blog, so you can always get to this later. It's just at ugamarkj.blogspot.com. But what I wanted to cover was just what I see uh, when I run into folks that maybe didn't have as good of a experience implementing Tableau Server as we've had, and I hear a lot of the uh, the explanations as to the reasons why, and I, I usually think to myself, well, you just didn't really implement it in the, uh, the ideal way. So this was my attempt to kind of go through some of that and talk about the pitfalls that people run into and um, some alternatives and way you can manage this a little better. So the first thing is I hear a lot of extreme proliferation of data sources. Um, if you're allowing your users to use data server and you're giving them the ability to access data sources through CSV files or download data through other systems, you could quickly get out of control with the data source proliferation. So um, to do a better job with that, you, you really kind of need a core team that's focused around um, building enterprise data models uh, so that there's, there's one place that people can go to in, in our environment where healthcare, so one place they can go to for patient encounters uh, one place they can go to for charges. They don't have to download data and then upload their CSV data sources with their workbooks, and you end up blowing up the size of the disks on your server that way. Another thing is misuse of sites. So I, I see people a lot, and they think in terms of traditional SDLC processes when they get Tableau. Um, you know, a lot of the, there's other BI tools on the market that fit better with a traditional SDLC process, but Tableau is rapid development, agile methodology. So uh, when people see sites, they oftentimes think, oh, I could set up a, a test um, site, a development site, and we could migrate things through these sites up into production. And I would say, don't do it. Um, we have a multi-tenant um, site, multi-site uh, thing implementation at Piedmont, and the intent is these are different tenants, and they have different data needs and the data needs to be completely isolated. There's no reason to move content between sites. And I think that was the original idea when Tableau implemented this feature is that that would be a multi-tenant kind of scenario and not something where you would use it for SDLC. If you try to use it to um, do SDLC, um, you're going to be pulling your hair out. And really the, the next one, the pitfall number three, the misuse of server instances is a lot the same. Uh, when the, uh, the sales guys tend to sell you a server implementation, what they'll do is they'll say, hey, you could set one up for production, one for test, one for dev. We have two environments at Piedmont, um, a test and a production environment. We do all our development in production. Our test environment, we just use that to test upgrades um, for Tableau server. And so usually that conjures up images of the Doseki guy, and I don't always test my code, but when I do, I do it in production. But you got to think of things a little different. It's not that we're saying SDLC is bad. It's just different in the way you manage it. You can still do um, SDLC processes, but you don't need to set up different servers and different sites to achieve that. Um, you could set up a project folder for QA and have your users publish there first to validate with the end users before they publish to a production folder. The next one is a deploying Tableau as a developer-centric tool. Tableau is really meant to be something that takes the data analysis to the masses. It's 
by far I've found the easiest to use tool in the market for building dashboards and doing ad hoc analysis. So you really want to put that power in the hands of the end users and you don't want it to be constrained by a small group of developers. The sixth one here is having a poor data modeling strategy. It was similar to the extreme proliferation of data sources. Um, what we do oftentimes is we'll, we'll write a lot of code like this. This is what our one of our data sources might look like and hundreds of lines of code. Um, we'll develop this kind of incrementally and publish this as a source and eventually kind of parse this apart later down the road and um, convert it to a view because it's a lot easier to manage that way. You don't want to have to edit the custom SQL inside of Tableau Server every time. Um, let's see, was there anything else I wanted to with that? Uh, we'll keep moving forward here. The core application server monitoring, you saw a lot of cool stuff from Paul. I'll only reference that on my viz, you'll see, or on my blog, you'll find um, that I've got a section. Let me see if I can get to it here. I think at the top is blocking me. So I have these custom Tableau Server admin views, and you will have access to download these views for yourself and just plug and play them into your environment. Um, so if you'd like, you go out to my blog, come and check out what you need to do. Uh, the one there is add user management strategy. Sorry, there seems to be some mic on. Let me see. Keep your line. Okay, so bad user management strategy, you, you definitely want to make sure you're managing everything by groups. And to give you an example of that, you can see that how we set up our projects here at Piedmont, um, they're based around certain roles. So this project is for all entities, director and up, and uh, cancer analytics. There's certain groups, corporate finance, certain departments, there may be certain um, entities like Piedmont Henry administration, manager and up. So we make it really obvious who's going to have access to things when you publish into those folders. So you definitely want to make sure you're using groups to manage things. Um, number nine is critical, lack of data governance leadership. If you don't have that in your organization, you're just going to be spinning your wheels and you're not going to make a whole lot of progress. It's critical that you have executive support for what you're trying to do to get enterprise definitions for things, to set up quick and reliable ETL processes, and make sure somebody's championing your tools. Um, which kind of leads into that last pitfall, which is to build it and they will come. Um, I've seen this happen many, many times throughout my consulting career um, where IT will just install an application and expect that it's all going to be unicorns and rainbows from here on out and we've got this awesome piece of software and it's just going to grow. But the reality is you're always going to have to be pitching this. You're always going to have to be a sales and it doesn't matter how good the tool is you need to be selling it all the time, um, which is why at the bottom I reference a Zig Ziglar book, The Secrets to Closing the Sale. It's an awesome book. You should definitely read it because everybody's selling something. And if you want to champion this throughout your organization, that's really key. So um, that's all I'll go through. Um, I had some other things that I, I thought about showing you guys around improved user experience, but mine's kind of the poor man's methodology. Um, for pulling it off, and I've got it all on my blog. Jeff's got some cooler stuff, so I'm going to pass it off to Jeff. Sorry, Mark, Great. it's Paul Thanks here. Thanks a lot. It's Paul here. Can I just make a comment, Mark, on that on that last pitfall there about about selling? Now, I, I can't stress that one enough because I, I sometimes feel like a door-to-door -door salesman. I must say I do. I've got my demo practice, then I must do it five or six times a week to different people and I, I know that Rob Radburn if ever you've seen his his talk for Leicestershire County Council he he actually has a portable projector that he keeps by his desk with a laptop where he just he just grabs it and pitches up in somebody's office and just gets the projector out and you are, it is a constant selling job selling and um, education of users to really you don't just leave it out there it's a constant sales job it's great feedback it's a good point um, so now we'll move on to Jeff, who has uh, kind of some tips, tricks, some cool stuff that he's been working on um, that we think you'll find pretty interesting. Thank you. Diego, can you hear me? Yep, sounds great. Okay, excellent. So this is Jeff Strauss. I'm part of Conversant. We're a heavy user of Tableau Server from uh, publishing the visualizations from Tableau Desktop being able to share it with our external clients 
and this session is called Server Admin, Getting the Mostess Out of the Hostess, meaning to have most server, because there's so much that you can do with it. Your imagination is really your own limit, only limitation. So here's, I'm going to jump right into it and uh, run through a few examples, so I'll get out of the PowerPoint here. So essentially the conventional out of the box solution that Tableau provides, it's great. Uh, we're using it every day. It's 24 by seven used. We have about 3,500 defined users across two different sites within our Tableau server environment. We have analysts that are going to publish every day up to the Tableau server to the built-in type uh, can approach. Uh, to do heat maps, to do geography, to do trend lines, to be able to answer any kind of question that they need. And it's highly pervasive across the organization. We have some things that were already talked about, such as the office hours and the wikis and the newsletters and so on and so forth. And we have the executive sponsorship. In fact, our CEO goes and logs in and sees some executive dashboards in here, which is great. Uh, what we've also done, what I'm going to talk about today, is really the second half of Tableau Server, that when you dive a, a bit deeper into it, there's a ton of opportunities out here uh, to be able to enable additional features in a Tableau Server, whether it be building a custom portal or being able to do some uh, kind of admin functions by using the tab command type scripts. And usually we combine the tab commands with the read-only ID to be able to tap into the internal Postgres repository. And we recently started going, getting into the Rust APIs. We're already using the JavaScript API. So the three examples that I'll cover today are the data synchronization, the update database connections, and uh, custom portal. The other ones uh, we could cover some other day if we choose to. So example number one is, I know what uh, Mark and Paul said about limiting the sites that you have within your deployment, and it's a point well taken. And it's something that I want to continue to stress to say, don't go overboard on your sites, but if you need multiple sites, then go ahead and do it. In our case, we have one site for our internal consumers and analysts that are within the network here, and then we have an external site for external clients that they're coming into a load balancer. The load balancer has rules within it to say you're only allowed from the outside world to be able to get to this marketer site, and uh, therefore, uh, essentially, we needed another site for that. But what came about is that every night we have nightly extracts that go and pull information off of our Green Plum warehouse so to essentially power the fast performance within our internal site. But uh, what we wanted is consistency for our external clients to be able to see the exact same data in terms of the data extracts, and we didn't want to have to do dual extracts because the extracts can tend to take a while. Uh, so what we did is we created a script, and let me get out of here and go on to Tableau Server. So I'm on my development site here, and we're very big into the ability to use published data sources, which essentially means, let's say, the second one here, acquisition performance. There could be one workbook that taps into that, or there could be 10 workbooks that are all sharing that common data within our internal site here, right? And then we also have the marketer over here as well, right? But the marketer, you'll see, has the underscore M here, which essentially just visually denotes to us that it's a uh, marketer uh, type data source, right? Uh, and it's externally accessible. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one of these. I'm going to go and edit the connection. I'm going to go and save it. Okay. And then I'm going to go and run the script here. 
that is running within my development server here. And I'll just show you what's behind the script after it runs. It's going to run really quick. The reason why it runs really quick is because it runs every 15 minutes, and only if there's ever any work to be done, which means that the marketer data source is older than the internal data source, then the data is going to be copied over. So the data connection that I just updated was a case in point of that, of essentially video messaging, where essentially what we're doing here is we're saying the internal was updated at 1536. This is GMT time. The marketer one is older. So what we're doing is we're logging in with tab command. We're getting the video messaging from the server, and then essentially we're going to publish it up to our marketer site. How this is done here is essentially we have a script that goes and names all the data sources that we're copying over. And then we're going to, uh, so like video messaging is right here, number 29. And then uh, for that, we're going to call here and we're reading the internal Postgres repository and and it had to change with version 9 because the repository changed a little bit of how it worked. And we found this in testing where essentially what we're doing is we're looking for a source last touch, and then we're looking for a target last touch. And if the target is older than the source one, then we're setting the flag to 1. And then further down here in the script, we say the, the continue process flag is equal to 1. We're proceeding with a copy and we go and log in, we do a get, and we go and do a publish, and then essentially everything is kept in sync, and it, it essentially it uh, avoids any questions from our internal employees or from our external clients to say, things are out of sync. Uh, uh, I'm seeing one thing on my marketer, seeing one thing on internal, and everything is wonderful because it's consistent and everybody is getting the same answers all the time and we avoid those questions. So that's example number one. I know I went through that really quick. Example two and three are examples that use the REST API. And the let me go into full screen here. Okay. Uh, the concept of the REST API is that built within Tableau Server is a set of methods. You always have to be able to sign in, but then there's query data sources, there's query workbooks for users. There's all different kinds of methods that you can do. It's embedded, it's all documented within the link I've included on this PowerPoint here, but then there's some ability to be able to integrate those methods into some kind of outside application. This outside application be, can be Java, it can be Python, it could be .NET, it could be whatever you need it to be, right? And you can do whatever kind of ideas that you need it uh, to be in there. So the two examples that I'll go and show today are something called, that we finally know as Tab Command Advanced and then uh, an online portal that is still under development. So if I come over here, you know what? Before I go over here, let me go into here. Okay, so I have all my data sources, and um, it, uh, many of these data sources, if I go, let's see, just pick, put Green Plum as our warehouse type, and let me go and clear the selection here, right? And let me do a select all. What we used to have to do in version 8 of Tableau Server is we would come in here and the interface was different in version 8, but you could still do it in version 9. And every night we would, uh, if we could remember, we would have to go and update the username and the password. The reason being is that whenever we run these production extracts at night, we want it to essentially run under an application ID on, against our warehouse because it had greater rights and uh, privileges against our warehouse than the individual use IDs that are able to publish up to Tableau Server. And sometimes we would get errors if passwords would 
change for individual use IDs and all. And it was a, a manual error prone type process that we lived with until we got up to version 9. So up on version 9, uh, we uh, created this tab command advanced, which essentially took the code out of the REST API. It uh, created an executable out of it, and then um, that we essentially build methods into the executable using the REST API, which I'll show you in a second, that essentially um, if I do a show DB classes, that shows me the various different database types that I have on server, right? Um, let me go and get the other one here. Here. I got rid of the password. Okay. We have an update connection here. Okay. And I go here. I do paste. Oh, it didn't do it. Hold on. It did at that time. Okay. So this tab command advance is essentially uh, going through each of the workbooks, looking at the connections, and uh, going to update it uh, with, to a username because I'm on test here of dummy username and a password of dummy password. And then, so it did 17 of those, and then it goes and uh, updates the published data source connections. How this is being done is within this little .NET module that we go and publish up to this executable that we call tab command advance. So essentially this .NET mod module here has a set of commands such as login, logout, update connection by DB class, show DB classes, right? And if I go and uh, go to the definition for this, Essentially, uh, the um, update connection by DB class is uh, going to call these modules that essentially um, for workbooks is looping through every connection here and it's writing out to the console just as we saw updating data source connections for workbook and it's uh, going uh, looping through every connection within the workbook and updating it to the appropriate username and password. Right? And the same thing happens for the published data sources, which is happening here. Um, and that's how that works. Um, so this is just uh, one example of what you can do with the REST API from an executable type perspective. The other example that I'll go and show that uh, is still under development, so I'm not showing the code quite yet for it, is our custom portal. So if I go into our uh, default Tableau 9 portal, it looks like this, right? And then um, and because I was already signed in, it didn't ask me for the site. Uh, but then essentially on here, I go and, oh, let me, that's why it's not looking right. Let me pick internal, go to workbooks, pick one of these like my capacity management type workbook, right? Um, it's essentially forcing me to go and pick the view first. What we've gone and done is uh, we're looking for a simpler way for our internal users to be able to get into the system. So we've uh, developed a custom portal using .NET that essentially looks something like this. Okay, and uh, we're using the REST API, uh, the methods that are within there to uh, there's a method called query workbook for user that because I have admin rights, it's showing me all of the workbooks that are under each of the projects here. Uh, and then uh, there's other, and we, we have similar type constructs to what the default portal has where essentially here's the list view and here's the thumbnail type view and you can go and highlight the favorites and you could say favorites only kind of deal uh, stuff there. But it's essentially a slimmed down version of what the default portal does, but it has some niceties that our users were uh, looking for, such as we don't have all these multiple 
search boxes. We only have one search box, so essentially, if I as I start typing here, um, it dynamically goes and filters down to uh, just uh, the projects and the workbooks that I'm going to look for there. And then I can go and sort, sort by workbooks or sort by projects. The, so that was some of the intent of wanting to do this is to essentially simplify the search by being able to enable some better content uh, discovery. But then some of the other reasoning for doing this is it provides flexibility to include external resources that aren't so core to Tableau Server itself, um, such as we built in the for admins could put alerts out there. So if I go out here and do test, think, or think data Thursday, and I put in uh, try this, and I put in uh, type of danger. If I go and do a create, as long as it's working, if I go back to insights, then essentially every user that goes and logs in here goes and gets an alert up top. They can go and X out of the alert saying, yeah, 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 I've seen that information. It's all well and good, and it could be red, yellow, or green up here. Uh, but it's something that uh, we don't always know who all the users are that are logging into the system to be able to uh, view their dashboards. And if something's running late, this we find it's going to be more effective than just emailing all of our users or doing an RS, RSS feed, because it's right there for them to be able to see. Uh, they're still able to get to the default portal here, right, um, which essentially takes them to the default portal, right? Uh, and then we've also included outside resources, such as our reporting wiki, which I think is being blocked here. Um, let me go there. Okay. So our reporting wiki essentially is some of what was talked about earlier, such as being able to put training materials out there. What is Insights, which is our inter internal branding that, that's uh, essentially pervasive across the organization. People don't know it as Tableau. People internally know it as Insights because that's where they're getting all their answers and getting, getting all their metrics from, so common use cases, so on and so forth. Um, and then uh, we've also built in some monitoring dashboards so as opposed to having to go down here to go and get uh, the dashboards, then they could get it directly. So essentially, when I go, let me just type in admin. Um, when I click on one of here, it takes me uh, directly to the workbook without having to go and look at the views first. OK. Um, so that's an example of the custom portal that we've gone and built out there. Um, and it's a potential for anybody to be able to go and do something uh, similar to this. Uh, and it's really this a key is really unlocking the potential by being able to leverage the REST API, being able to leverage the tab command and uh, internal database and be able to do exactly what you need whenever you go need to go and do it. So that's Great. essentially Thanks. the three examples. Yeah, that was awesome. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Um, so now we have just under 10 minutes for Q&A. Um, and we can actually get it started with a question for you, Jeff, um, which you may or may not know the answer to. Um, Francis Pegas asks, can all of these functions be run on AWS hosted Tableau server? A W S hosted I believe server. It's a cloud. So a cloud hosted Tableau server. Yeah, uh, uh, maybe somebody else can chime in on that because uh, we're not running in the cloud. We're running on premises, and I, I think I've seen out on the forum people being able to do some tab commands against the online uh, Tableau, but I'm not exactly sure. Great. Um, anybody else, else have any insights on that? Otherwise, we have some other questions we can get to. All right. 
Um, we have another question from Brock and Peters. Um, are there any admin screens that can show reports being called using the JavaScript API? Or are being called by the JavaScript API? By the JavaScript API? Yeah. So I know that there are admin screens out there uh, that essentially if I go into uh, the server and uh, there's these built-in reports down here, uh, that shows uh, traffic to views, so on and so forth. But in addition to that, uh, we've gone and built our own uh, custom usage type dashboards where essentially it's down here called Report Usage Diagnostics that we can go and filter by the site. And that was another reason for being able to wanting to segment out by uh, site to essentially say, uh, because marketer is always using the JavaScript API, uh, then we could essentially, um, maybe it's under workbook usage. I'm going a little bit off of script here, but there's a way of filtering one of these tabs on here to essentially say, is it a client or is it uh, somebody else? So here I could essentially go to marketer, hit apply, and then it's just showing me the users that have logged into our marketer type site, which are a lot of users. Okay, so th so that's one way of doing it. There may be some built-in ways of doing it as well. I'm just I'm not quite uh, familiar with all the built-in type features. Right. Um, we this have Mark. I'm not aware of anything in the in the Postgres database that'll like flag something that's being called from the JavaScript API versus just hitting it from the normal interface. Great. Cool. Um, Eric McDonald um, said, we really need to get tab command advanced uh, documented on Tableau server online help. Um, so that was actually something that you built yourself, Jeff, right, using the REST API? That is. Uh, so we just chose to uh, call it the tab command advanced, so we didn't intend to cause any confusion out in the community, but it is something that we could go, uh, I could go and put a post out there on the Tableau server admin community for it. Yeah, that sounds like it would be fantastic. I think uh, a lot of our users would get use out of that. Um, Megan Kyle asks, uh, this is for all, um, do you share your admin views with your users? Um, it's Paul here, I'll ask that one. Um, absolutely we do. If you look on the on the front of the connections page that I, uh, I advertised, there's a button that says um, performance and, um, and capacity or something like that. And that's, familiar, that's totally open to users to go, and, to go and look at it. We don't hide anything. We're very transparent about our server, server and our service, and I want users to see exactly what we see. And the real benefit is we've also made those filterable so that they can filter it down to their own particular content if they're not interested in, in the service-wide data. Um, and that's really cool. Users, users are using those views all the time, and they get as much value with introspection into their own area's usage of Tableau as, as I do. This is Mark. One of my uh, admin views is actually custom to the publisher. So when the publisher lands on it, they see data that's specific to them. Um, but our other views, we generally share those as well. This is Toby Erickson, and yeah, I share um, the background, uh, the version 8 um, admin screen, uh, the background tasks that are running. I have it filtered down so they don't see everything that's going on, but for subscriptions and extracts, they definitely get to see that so they can monitor their stuff and see if it's failed and why it's failed and stuff like that. Great. Um, just going back to the uh, previous um, question. Gerardo uh, posted, you could use one user as the JavaScript API user, then follow that user um, for tracking the API calls. So that's a potential workaround there um, in terms of figuring out what's being called by the JavaScript API. Um, and it looks like we have time for maybe one other question. Um, we have, can we find out which user modified a workbook other than the owner of the workbook? I'm not sure that there's a history table that tells you who all has owned it at one point in time. 
if you modify a workbook, you become the owner of it. So I'm not sure if there's history tables there. Right. I think there's a lot of potential in that with, um, you know, may maybe future integration of version control could then leave a, a breadcrumb trail of, of ownership and, and modifications across a workbook. I'd like to see that enter the product. Yeah, great. Um, we probably have time for one more if we get it in quickly. Otherwise, um, let's see. Yeah, so it looks like that's all the uh, questions that we have. Um, I think all of our presenters, this has been absolutely fantastic. Um, super, super useful. And um, just a reminder that uh, all of our panelists are super, super active in our community, and that's a great place to reach them. It's a great place to have these conversations. Um, so if you want to follow up with anything that you heard today, um, just go ahead and post out there, and we can try and draw attention to um, any of our panelists from today. So. Uh, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and next week we have, let me see if I can uh, share my screen here. Um, next week we have, sorry, I keep saying week. Next month on July 16th um, at 8 a.m. Pacific time, um, we are going to have another session, which is Tableau in the Cloud with Diamonds. Um, so it's going to be a specifically Tableau Online focused event um, where we'll talk all about um, different tips and tricks, some of our new offerings, um, and it's going to be a mixture of employees who work all over the company. So um, we're really excited for that. Um, just a reminder that this will be this recording will be posted likely in a few hours online in our community. Um, just go ahead and search for Think Data Thursday. Um, and yeah, feel free to share this around. Um, give us your feedback. We love ideas for future events. Um, and we really um, appreciate those and take those to heart and uh, try to incorporate as much as we can. So um, thanks again to all of our panelists. And this has been great.